So here we are today, and I have a question for you. What calls you to be with all of us today? Who are you here for? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the People's Gathering. This is truly a first of its kind opportunity to build community connections, think outside the box, get creative, and make a difference in the lives of children and families throughout New Jersey. The topic that I would like is healing racial trauma in schools. The inclusion and exclusion of lived experience voices. Um, decluttering and deep cleaning and stabilizing the home. Creating space, safe spaces for families and children. The inappropriate use of restraints and aversives. How do we actually report back to the community what's happening? How do we actually plan for the community to have more direct input into the work that the Office of Resilience is doing? Uh, we recognized as we began to engage with folks across the state of New Jersey that while it was a, a good plan, in fact, it was, we thought it was a great plan, but we also realized that there were areas that we had not addressed. And so we wanted to figure out how do we hear from folks to plug the holes, to let them know what we've been doing and gather their input. Early childhood care and supporting the workforce in early childhood. The healing trauma in children with autism. Generational trauma and how that shows up at CAP agencies and agencies that provide support services. Prevention of ACEs and how we can talk about this in our communities. This is a conversation that needs to happen, right? This is a conversation that I hope extends outside. And this is just so necessary for ourselves, for our own internal selves, as well as how we externalize that within our communities. I see it as a privilege to, to be here today um, and have this conversation. Um, as a researcher and a pediatrician, a lot of the things I do are, are, are in a bubble and isolated. Um, and I try to find interventions and ideas and programs that work to address the impact of trauma on kids. I said yes, because anytime I'm given the opportunity to celebrate my healing um, in the presence of others and in community, especially with my family, it will be a hell yes for me. Part of why I said yes is also my personal mission is to bring and establish harmony in every space I go into. And in order for me to accomplish that, it seems like Aces is, is the last dragon within this game that we have to slay. Oh, it, it says hurt people will hurt other people and heal people will heal other people. We glorify them. We glorify the scar faces, you know, the, the different gangsters that we see on TV, the different gangsters we see in music and things of that sort, you know, but we have to normalize um, the opposite. We have to normalize being human and being loving. That's why this conversation is so powerful, mm -hmm. right? Do you know that I've been doing this for 10 years and never have I sat on a panel with one other African-American male, let alone two? Mm -hmm. Right. And so the narrative right in our country, right, are black men are bad. Black men are dangerous. Right. That's the power to me of this conversation of the three of us sitting here together. Right. What we're showing right is we're, we're showing we're, we're changing what people perceive as the norm. Right. That black man can be healing, that black man can be loving, that black man can be um, can be the, 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 the catalyst. Right. For, for addressing ACEs. Right. We are seeing. The three of us, when we walk out on the streets of Philadelphia, we are seen as the source of ACEs. We are not the source of ACEs, right? We are the source of love and healing. What healing-centered engagement teaches us is that healing does not happen in a vacuum. Healing um, needs to be thought of as an ecosystem approach, meaning that we actually have to heal from the ways that this society has socialized us in harm. And I think the goal with healing-centered engagement is to think of power, not as something that we have over people, but something that we share with people, shared power, right? It's more than just about me. It's about other people too, because when I deny myself the right to like show up as my full self with other people and in community with people, if I'm not showing up as authentically me, then I'm 
denying other people of it of a real chance to experience me and get to know me like relationship telematter so like having conversations so that you can relate to somebody in the deepest level no matter the age so like my patients that are old they want to be heard and seen and valued the kids that i know they want to be heard and seen and valued my friends they want to be heard and seen and valued and so like when you have the intention of having like genuine authentic relationships when you experience hardships in life then you know you have safe spaces to go to for me when i think about the visions that i have for others to heal i'm an abolitionist i believe that there is another way i believe there is another world that awaits us but how can i be rooted in a real belief that that possibility exists if i don't start creating um, the practices and the situations and context for that to actually happen. When we live in awareness and mindfulness and intention, I, I often reflect on like, what's the legacy I want to leave behind? Because at some point I'm going to be an ancestor. At some point I will no longer exist, but will I exist outside of my physical existence? And how will that look like? They you say know? when the mind is empty, and when the mind is pure, that is when we can see our true reflection. I am strong. I am powerful. I am love. I am light. As we invite healing, we invite our connection back to wholeness. And our wholeness is what we are. Our wholeness is the core of our being. It is our humanity. It is our love and our connection to that space within ourselves. So the wholeness is a return to wholeness. It's a space where we were before the pain, the trauma, right? And it's a space we're arriving back to. So in a lot of ways, we're returning home. We're here for Healing New Jersey together, and sometimes we forget that we need to heal ourselves. I'm really glad to see that there were um, groups that were discussing self-care and how to take care of ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you for this great opportunity. So thank you for those of you who really shared from, you know, from the heart. I, I am grateful. I am honored and I feel privileged to be able to even be on this platform with so many amazing and beautiful souls. Thank you for joining us at the People's Gathering. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.